Hello, this is Lino Tadros from Falafel Software and welcome to this video for showing how to do testing for mobile devices like iPhone, iPad and Androids. There is a new tool actually on the market. It's coming from a company called Experitest. The tool is called C Test Studio and it will allow you to do testing and debugging on devices like iPhone and iPad and Androids, Blackberries, Windows Mobile. Uh, it's a great tool and I'd like to show you how to use it. Once you install the tool, I have right now an iPhone device hooked up through USB, so it's a real device, it's not an emulator. It's hooked up to my machine, and now I'm going to actually add it. Uh, this is a completely brand new project in here. I'm going to click on the plus sign in there. As you can see, I can add any of these devices, the Android, the iPhone, Blackberries, Windows Mobile, Symbian, and also it will work with Mac and Linux machines as well. I'm going to click on the iPhone device. And this is the one thing that I need to discuss. For iPhone and iPad, you will need to jailbreak the, uh, the phone. And I know this might be concerning to some, but the truth of the matter is this is a development device that you'll use for testing. This is not something required for the end users, just for during the development and testing itself. So it's okay to actually have one of your devices uh, jailbroken. And now it's very easy to do that all the way to 4.3.5 versions is available. Usually it takes a week to two weeks after any release from Apple comes out to be jailbroken. And by the way, used based on the United States rules right now, this is not an illegal thing. You can definitely do that. It is totally legal to do this. Alrighty? Uh, once you do this for the first time, you'll need to deploy an agent on your device by clicking this. So once you have your root, username, and password, which the default is always Alpine, but unless you change it yourself. Uh, once you do that, you can deploy this once, and you never have to do it again. That piece will be residing on your iPhone. I'm going to say OK there. Notice that my iPhone device itself using USB has been added to my project. Now I can click on it, and I can actually turn it on by saying connect and open a device. We'll wait for a second, and there is here my emulator that's mimicking exactly what's happening on my device itself. It's turned off right now. I'm going to click on the device in my hand, the, uh, the button to turn it on. There it is. I'm going to open it up, and there you can see exactly what's happening on my device on this iOS USB emulator right there. All right, let's go ahead and start recording. I'm going to click on the record in here for the script tab. And now, let's say, for instance, I'm going to go write a note. We'll click on notes in here. I'm going to click on the plus sign, and let's type in something like Lino was here, for instance. And notice I used the, uh, the keyboard on my, um, on my machine itself, not this keyboard in here. And for right now, it's not encouraged to use this keyboard. Use the physical keyboard. In the future, that might actually work uh, better, but for right now, you'll need to use the physical keyboard to send this information to the screen. All right? And that's it. Let me go ahead and stop the script and see what got recorded for us. Notice it took a few seconds to analyze what's going on. And now, let's go ahead and take a look what's happening. There's three things that happen. First of all, the script as commands, visual commands, have actually been recorded. The first one is to set the application title to this new machine, which is the iOS USB. So it went to that um, screen and that device to start the application. And then it found this image. So you'll notice it took an element here called element zero, and it saved it in the elements on the left side as a recognized element that it will need to find. So the, the question here is that if I click on this, notice it says zone default, element 0, index 0, click count 1, and all of these are the properties of the specific step in the script. So it's trying to find this image inside of the big, um, big screen here on the first screen uh, when the application uh, starts. So the question might be what happens if this note moves um, It's in a completely different area on the screen, for instance, will it still recognize it? And the answer is yes. Um, it's not using pixels to find out what it is on the screen. It's actually going to find, try to find this image anywhere on the screen. The other thing that you can do also is that you can actually make this recognizable by text using an OCR. So uh, C-Test will allow you to find an image or text on the screen. It does not try to find objects. Uh, it does try not to understand objects and what's running in memory on a device. It doesn't do that. It's a visual testing, but it's definitely still very, very valuable to do these things. And after it did that, notice it will click on the plus sign on the top right of the screen to add the node. And finally, it actually sends the Lino was here. And notice there is um, a character here that was not recognized. That's fine. We'll go ahead and click on it. We'll go to the properties, and I'm going to delete it and put an I in here. So sometimes this happens, of course, using um, these USB communication and so on. So 
I'm now sending the uh, text called Lino was here to the screen. So what else can I do in here? For instance, element zero, again, it doesn't know what this is actually during the recording, but I can always come back in here and change the name. We we'll call it, for instance, the note app. We can call it whatever we want. We can set the scanning type with advanced similarity, strict or color grid, just in case you want to find it on different devices that have maybe different uh, look and feel, or if, if they changed a little bit, the, uh, the look and feel of this icon and uh, one of the versions of the product and so on. Sensitivity is very important. We'll go into a lot deeper into future uh, videos on this, but again, uh, think of this as uh, something maybe on a page that you have rating, so you have like five stars. Some of these stars will be in gold, some of them will be black and white, and maybe one that has half would be half of the star will be in gold and the other half will be turned off. So if you set the sensitivity lower than 97% or 100%, you can recognize all the stars no matter what the color or what the shape um, uh, the, the, uh, the combination of the different colors inside, you will be able to recognize all of them in the same object. So that's definitely a very useful thing to do as well. You can set the main color, the background color, and so on. All right, you would say okay there. And I'll do the same thing with the plus sign. Let's go change the name from element one. We'll say add note so that it can be more useful to, to read in your script if you want to. And then we're done. All right. So the important thing in here is that I can run this test right away. So let's go ahead and open up my, uh, my machine again. I'm going to my device in my hand right now, turning it on. Let me go ahead and delete this note and go to the main screen again. There we go. And let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. We'll say play and sit back, relax, and take a look what's going on. So if we've done this right, notice the system is actually running this entire thing, and it's going to finish the test successfully. One of the nicest things actually about the tool is we'll actually open and create an HTML page, and it will have a full report of what happened. So it will show you that it will set the application title that was successful. It did the command description um, in here to go to the note app. It would put a red rectangle around it to show you exactly what's going to be clicked on. And then it clicked on the plus sign. So you can actually have this part of your reporting for the test itself. And as Lino was here, was entered in the system right away. So you'll have a full description. You can actually modify these comments as well if you'd like. All righty. Uh, in future videos, we'll go deeper into finding out how you can actually have the same application under Android and um, and iPhone, for instance, have exactly the same scripts. You can actually add more element for how this image will look under Android. So when you run the same script under much, uh, many more devices, it will still be able to run the same exact test. So that could be very, very useful as well. Hopefully this was useful for you, and we'll see you soon in other videos from Falafel Software. Thank you.